Hello, welcome back everyone. Thank you for joining me once again for Nancy Drew Warnings at Waverly Academy. And it is snowing currently. Um, did I know that? Possibly? Maybe? I don't know. Anyways, I want to start off this episode by making a confession of sorts. And my confession is that um, I... As you may have known from the last episode, I was kind of unsure of what to do. And um, in my impulsiveness and my curiosity got the best of me. And uh, what I'm supposed to do is some of these things here, um, I'm supposed to do a, basically a Google search. Uh, for example, like this perfect etiquette, I'm supposed to do a search for that at the library computer. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and then also there's this one about the piano, so I need to also do a search for that too. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, also, uh, as a behind the scenes, I wanted to make mention that as of this episode, the f as I'm recording it, uh, the first episode has released. And I just wanted to say that, like, I got a, a pretty good amount of views for the first even several hours, let alone the first day. And this outpouring, I hope, I'm, I mean, this is the fifth video in the series, but I hope that the number of views continues on. And if so, I am so appreciative that people are watching and keeping up and enjoying. I hope that you guys continue to enjoy uh, the series going forward. But with that said, let's continue on. We're going to search for piano. All right, so musical notation, uh, M virtuoso, uh, M corbulus, do M corbulus nonfiction. I think this M corbulus is Mel. Um, let me see here. Uh, suspects. Let's see. What was Mel's name? Do we have Mel's name? I don't know. Uh, t -t 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 I don't remember. But I think this was supposed to be for Mel, which makes sense because she's a musical person. And then I think... But how am I supposed... To, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to, like, view this somehow. Let me see the etiquette. No results found. Uh, dinner? No results found. Uh, <clears throat> this was for the perfect etiquette. Oh, maybe res let's research rendition. See if there's a book or something here that says what the letters and numbers on those lampshades mean. They could be the key, as it were, to playing the piano rendition. I think this is the search term, her. Uh, rendition. Her rendition. Rendition. Okay. No. Okay. I'm not sure how I was supposed to know that. Like what I'm doing here. Let me search perfect etiquette then. Or celebratory dinner. Uh, perfect. Etiquette. Huh. Celebratory dinner. Sometimes... I, I will just say, sometimes in games, not specifically Nancy Drew, but the games like this, um... Ask Mel for the music theory book she brought. Oh, this... Okay. I think that was Mel Corbulus because this added a task here uh, for Mel Corbulus. Um, but sometimes... Maybe this is just me just being kind of a bit of a dummy, but I feel like sometimes I play these games and the clues, as they were, don't really hit me. Yeah, Mel Corbulus, M. Corbulus. All right. I'm here. How goes it? 
That book on music theory you checked out, could I take a look at it? No problem. As long as you go get me some milk and a cookie from the snack shop. It's not that I'm too lazy to do it myself, it's just that... You have a certain image to maintain. Ah, she and winked. And milk and cookies don't exactly enhance it. Understood. I'll be back. I think that's cute that they, like... I don't think they did this in The Silent Spy, but, like, some of the little... Um quirks or little things that some of the characters do is kind of neat. I like that. I like it. Okay, everybody. Snack shop's open. Okay. Well, toasted bagel. Uh, then that person has water. You're asking Ben Sturgis to the winter bar. Chocolate you bar. You can't. He's dating Heather. No. I wow. She's gonna Just lettuce? After the ball. Come get your order. Water, apple. Burgundy is so not my color. Cookie. Why can't our uniforms be teal, black and white? Uh, and granola. And this one has bagel, cheese. Cookie. Come get your order. All right, bagel, cheese, lettuce, tomato. Uh, cheese, a bacon, oh, bagel, sorry. Juice, boop boop, apple, and pretzels. Here we go. Order's ready. Bagel. Oh, wait, that's not meat. This is meat. Bagel, chips, uh, chocolate bar, and water. Go. Food's ready. And this one's for Mel. Uh, got... Cookies going, and we got our milk. There. All done. Yep, that one was for Mel. It has to be. Okay. Let's go give her the milk and cookies. The big softies that she is. Yeah? You play mm. you play a mean game of putting up fronts, but... You've you, got my snack. You're awesome. a softie. Here you go. Perfect, thanks. You're All welcome. Yours. All right. What else is going on? I'll quit bugging you. Drop in any time. Okay. So, let's see. Let's check out this book. Key notation. As piano... Oh, wait. How many pages? Okay, so it's just this, this section. As pianos evolve to provide increased ranges for composers... The number of keys on the keyboard varied dramatically. To identify individual notes, numerous notation systems were created, several of which are still in use today. One of the most recognized systems is the scientific pitch notation. Okay. Um, also referred to as American Standard Pitch, this notation implements a note octave labeling system where the note is shown first and the octave number follows. Octaves, which span from C to B, are sequentially numbered on the keyboard. The lowest C on the piano is therefore labeled C1, where C is shown as C4. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. Is this C, C4 here? Oh, middle C. Okay. So lowest C is C1 here. And then this is middle C. Yeah, middle C. Sewn at C4. The keys to the left of C1 are labeled as a with a zero octave as these keys were presumably added to the piano after the notation was already in use. So this, okay, so here we go. Zero, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. The notation can also be used to represent vocal ranges such as those used in the German Foch system. Developed to classify opera singers, each singer is assigned a Foch range according to his or her abilities and will perform any roles falling within that range. For example, a coloratura 
soprano's range would go from C4 to F6, while a low bass would be able to sing from C2 to F4. I remember seeing this term right here, color, color, coloratura. So C4 to F6. So C4 to F6. Uh, I remember seeing that somewhere. I think it was in, was it in this thing? Okay, here we, uh, yeah, I think so. Um, this one has the piano rendition, first low bass, then color futara. Okay, and then if we go back to this one, low bass would be able to sing from C2 to F4. So this is low bass, low bass first. So that was C2 to F4. And then the color, color to coloratura was C4 to F6. So I'm not sure how that relates to what we're trying to do here. Yeah, first base, then coloratura. Because I'm not sure how that follows in with the piano. Okay. Yeah, so... Let's see. Here we go. So, C2 to F4, or C4 to F6. C2 to F6. Well, C2 is here. And then these don't look like they go in the proper order. Or does it? C2... Um check this keyboard layout again so c2 is here and then the next over would be one but if we're here at c2 the next one here would be d so this doesn't look like it's correct see we're here at c2 it should be yeah these are not the right keys so is and then this one c4 here so these are the keys. So these are the keys before uh, C4, right? No, these are the these are the keys that come after. So, but they they don't look like they're in correct order. Cause look here, see the C4, G4, then C5. And then B4 before E5? That that seems off. What is this what is this supposed to mean? And then these are twos. Threes are somehow in the middle here. And how does that relate to the piano here? Can I... Yeah, these have the little eyes, so you can only look at them. So we can't put them down on the music stand. But... Or... So low bass, C2 to F4. So... So it's it's musical notation. Uh, let me go look at my camera. Uh, oh man, it takes up the whole thing. Uh, view photos. 
Yeah, so here's C2. This is the, remember, this is low base, but these ones don't go in order. So C2, A2, uh, what happened to B2? And then there should be, I think they're G, but that would be G1. Yeah, C2. Oh, C2 then comes B1. C2 then comes B1. Not not 3 or 4 or whatever. Um, dude. So... Oh, wait. All right, so, let, let me take a look at this again. So, low bass would be able to sing from C2 to F4. Uh, so this one would be the low bass, right? C2 to... So I think Um Okay, here's here's my thought. So I think these are the keys, right? These are the keys that we have to play. Um, C2 to F4. Huh. Okay, give me one second, guys. Give me one second. Well, uh, sorry about the, uh, the abruptness there. My, my little boy had, uh, woken up crying and, um, I went over to console him and put him back to sleep. Uh, he's back to sleep now. Um, who knows? Who who knows how uh, how telling it will be for, for how long it will be asleep? But uh, until then, I'm gonna continue on here. Um, so uh, referring back here, uh, low bass goes from C2 to F4. So C2 includes. Um, Everything above C, all of them up to, and then to F4. So, I wonder if it's telling me that there's one of two things. So, either this is telling me that I need to play all of these notes because all of these notes fall within the um the notes for low bass right so c2 uh a2 is in there it, it it's counterintuitive because a2 is actually way at the end so after C, uh, d e f g then it comes a2 not a3 uh f3 is before d3 is before b2 same with a2 it's a2 then b2 and then uh, D2, obviously. So I think we play all of these notes in this order for low bass. And then it must be that these uh, are all the notes for the coloratura. Um, the coloratura is C4 to F6. So E6, uh, all the fives are within. Uh, C4, B4 is at the end there. C5, G4, G4, then A4 and B4. Yeah, so I think all of these notes are what we have to play. So we have to play all the notes on this lampshade and then play all the notes on this lampshade. I think that's what we're, we're doing here. So let's try to give that a, a shot here. So this is the middle C, right? So that is the middle C, the star. So, so that's C4. 
And then these are the sharps, but we're not going to be playing any of the sharps. All right, so let's go back to the photo here. Uh, um, let's there, we'll view view photos. Um, I'll delete this photo. Don't need this photo, right? Actually, I don't know. I'm going to leave it. So we need to play this one. Right. So we're playing D2, A2, B2. D2, A2, B2. So this is C4. Um, oh, man. So C4, then B3, and then A3. All right. So C4, B3. 3, A3, G3, F3, E, D, C3, G2, F, E, D. So this is D2, right? So what, what did we need to play, though? We need to play D2, A2, B2. So D2. Uh, D2, then it's C. Then this is the low C, right? Uh, e, F, G, A2. B2, C3, D, E, F, G, A. No. So, okay, so this is C4, right? Okay, so this is C. Um, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. This is also a C. And then... Um, B, A, F, E, D, C? No, wait. I think this was C. So, B, A, F, no. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Okay, so these are C's. C's are here. So C, like the, these two keys. So this is a C. This is C2. C3. C4. Okay. Right? But then, how do we get to the fives? There's not enough keys here to go for fives. Oh no, there is. Okay. So all all the all the low all the low base are here and then the color fatura is over here. Okay. So so what are we looking at? Okay. So let's let's do this again. So we're looking at D2A2 B2. So DAB2. Okay. So this is four, three, two, C two, D A B two. So D two, and and then this is C B two A two, C two A two B two. Okay. D2, A2, B2, D3, F3. Okay, D3, F3. This is C3. D3, E, F3. And then we have A2, C2. Okay, C2. No, this is C4. This is C3. 
I'm sorry. Uh, the last two. A2 and C2. Okay. So C3. B, A2. Right? A2 and then... My memory is terrible. A2, C2. Okay. C3, B2, A2. And then C2. All right. And then over here, we've got this other one. So we've got E6. Uh, then we're a bunch of fives. Okay. Let's, let's do E6 first. So C4, C5, C6. Uh, what was it? We've got E6. Okay, so C6, D, E6. And then we've got... One, two, three, four, four fives. So let's do A and A, B, C. Oh, no. A5 and B5 are close together. So this is C6. So A5. No, wait. Four, five, six. This is C6. So A5, B5. Uh, C5, E5, so C5, D, E5, B4, C5, okay, so B4, C5, and then the last two here, G4, C4. Okay, C4, D, E, F, G4, C4. Oh yeah! Look who did it, it's a cat. Look what your boy did. Your boy. Your boy Dan, that's who, that's what's up. That's what's up. Man, I got that one. I got Check. Mel stuff. Um, got Did this. That. Ask Mel, yep. Check. Uh, don't know about the foods, haven't done that yet. Snoop and Izzy's room. I still haven't, I still don't know how to do this one yet. I still don't know how to do that one. Uh, we haven't been able to get into our room. A piece of wood, uh, we need to get into that uh, that extra room that's locked. I don't know how to get in there yet. Um, chanters. Um, look for a way to learn about what people ate back in Rita Hallowell's time. Yeah, see, I can't get into this room yet. Oh, whoa. Wow, Check out the new Izzy, yucking gal it house. up with Kareen? This is an interesting turn of events. Huh. Interesting. Uh, let me go ask her about that. Actually, can I ask her? Is she over here? Can I ask hey, her? I'm a little busy right now, okay? Because of that picture of you and Kareen? There was no picture of me and Kareen. Somebody obviously used a computer and pasted a couple photos together. Well, yeah, she doesn't hang out with Kareen because she's popular and Kareen is not popular. Any idea who this somebody might be? Either Mel or Leela. They both resent me. And they're both experts at doing underhanded things. Mel and her plagiarism. Leela throwing elbows whenever the ref's not looking. Heck! Maybe it was both of them. Anyway, I gotta do some damage control, so leave, okay? The sooner I figure out where the pictures used in that composite came from, the sooner I can salvage my reputation. I'll see ya. Salvage my reputation. That's all she is, is reputation. Let's see what Kareen has to uh, has to say about this. Is she okay What's with up, it? What's up, Rumi? 
Did you get the text message with a picture of you and Izzy attached? Oh my gosh, was that not too cool? Me just sitting there chilling with my BFF Izzy Romero. How awesome can you get? <laughs> She's enjoying it because it's a boost to her popularity. It was awesome, all right. But was it real? What, the picture? Of course it was real. All this black cat stuff has brought her and me closer together. It, it's united us against a common enemy. Really? Am I angry the whole school thinks we're suddenly best buds? Of course not. Sure, Izzy might feel a little annoyed by all this attention, but if she does, tough. Welcome to my world, Queenie. Huh. Huh. It sounds like she knows it's fake, but she's pretending it to pass it off as real. I don't know if she actually thinks it's real or not. Because why would she? Uh, but then again, she, she's like, she knows that they're not best buds, and she's totally cool see you with, in a bit. Enjoy. with her being, uh, her Izzy being upset with it. Let's check what Mel has to say. Yeah? What's the word? Oh. I'll quit bugging you. Okay. Sounds good. Never mind. I guess this, that's not it. Let's see what Leela has to say. Hey, what's going on? She doesn't have anything to say about it either. I'll check back with you later. Okie dokie. Huh. Uh, is there anything about that? No, there wasn't anything. Izzy sounds a tad upset. <laughs> Three words regarding gal pal pick geniuses. Fake, fake, fake is... Okay, well, I guess we don't have anybody to talk to about that then. Um... Let's, let me talk to Rachel here. It's not locked. I can't talk now. Okay. Okay. Um, well then. What I do need, though, is I need some kind of search term or something for this thing. What do I search for? The celebratory dinner menu card. 1871. Who are these people? I'm sure they're like a developer and their kid, but who are they as far as the game is concerned? Yeah, we saw that. And there was nothing in here. Something comes up here. I'm sure of it. And something's got to come up here, too. I'm also sure of that. Um, and I'm like, I'm like fairly certain that we got to search for something for the dinner. But what do we search? Dinner. Um, let's see. I'm going to move my mic over here just a bit. Sorry, guys. Uh, let's see. Etiquette. No. Uh, 1871. Nope. Dinner. Jeez, what what am I supposed to search here? Uh, let's see. Does this Hallowell book give any... Any indication here? Um... This one has to do with birds and the U.S. States in the U.S. Um, let's see... Celebratory dinner. Let's see, um, I mean, it says celebratory dinner behind the Dupin grate. What is the Dupin grate? So, this is the chanting other Poe stories, Black Cat, Moon. Um, oh. Is it because I'm spelling etiquette wrong? No. Um, let's see. Um, 
Yeah, I'm spelling it right. Is it... Do I have to type perfect etiquette? Um... Maybe nine course. Nine course, maybe. I tried dinner. Um, let me do chant. Ooh. Check self. Enchanted dreams. Check. Oh, oh, check shelf. Or chant. Okay, let's let, maybe let's start there. I wonder if this is over here. No, here. Reference books. Come on, come on, come up with something. I feel like it should have been this book. I don't know of any other shelf that there would be. All right, so that's reference. It said nonfiction. Lost and found. That's that's not it. Oh. Uh, this is the computer. Um. I mean, it does. It's not in here check shelf I am checking the shelves it's just like how am I supposed to How's find it, going? it I've harassed you enough no problem yes this is reference books reference books it said to check the shelf but there is no non-fiction section that I can hit up here yeah but I need to know about chance enchanted dreams oh it's in fiction check shelf fiction uh, what about Dubingate? Poe. So there's a bunch of Poe stuff here. One's missing from the collections. Check shelf, check shelf, check shelf. Oh, I guess maybe specific, not specifically. Uh, check shelf just means whatever. I mean, just that something's there, I guess. Hmm. This one didn't particularly tell who it's been lent out to. Do twelve sixteen. Um, let me check my checklist here. Foods on the menu are served. Yeah, Snoop can't Snoop yet. Uh, hidden Holloway's hidden treasure. Oh, it's nighttime. Oh, Victorian, maybe? Let me see. Uh, hello? Still five. Okay. Victorian. Here we go. Formal Victorian dining. The right fork for the menu. And it's loaned out by Rachel Hubbard. All right. Right, Rachel? Uh, no, yeah, we're going this way. Okay. Miss Rachel? What? Give me that dang book. What? Listen, I know you checked out a book on Victorian dining, but I was wondering if I could borrow it. I'm kind of into Victorian stuff. Sorry, I need it for the paper I'm writing. But I'll tell you what. If you get my math notebook from Mel, I'll work on that project for a while, and you can borrow the Victorian book. I know Mel's just down the hall, but I'd rather not have to deal with her. Why? Sure. One math notebook coming up. Great. 
Well, good luck with your papers. Later. Mel seems like one chill person. I don't know why, like, people are... I don't know. High school, man. High school just... Come on in. It, it was, it's a weird time. Greetings once again. I need to get Rachel's math notebook from you. Sure. Soon as I remember where I put it. Nuts, I left it in the library. <laughs> That's all right, I can go get it. Why do you want her math notebook? Well, actually, Rachel, uh... She wants it, but she didn't want to ask me for it in person. Correct. It's almost like she's afraid of you. I don't treat her any differently than I treat practically everyone else around here. In other words, for the most part, I totally ignore her. I don't know what her problem is. Well, she probably thinks you're the black cat. That's I'll probably what it is. I'll let you get back to your music. Drop in any time. That's gotta be what it is. Gotta be, gotta be. All right, time to go to the library. All right, let's see, where? Oh, is it in the lost and found? Something tells me I don't see Rachel's math book anywhere because it wound up in here. Well, I've already opened it. Calculus? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty decent in calculus. Or at least I was. I don't know if I still am. Uh, let's see. Oh, I can't read it. Okay, that's fine. We're going to return it. Uh, no, we're going this way. All right, Miss... R. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> Sorry, it's L. Ron Hubbard. I'm here. It's almost like she's the daughter of. You've got my math notebook. Fab, I'll take that. What do you have against Mel? Nothing. She's one of the few girls around here I actually kind of like. Doesn't seem like but it. Before, you said you didn't want to deal with her. You misunderstood. I meant I didn't have time to deal with her because of these stupid papers I have to write. Sure. Anyway, the book's all yours. Go ahead and take sure. it. Sure. I don't think so. I gotta get back to work here. I'll see you later. I don't think so. You don't, you're not fooling anybody, Missy. Locked. Izzy must be somewhere else. Yes, she is. She's in the library, if you don't re recall. All right. All right, so open this up. Let's see. Let's check out this book. <laughs> All right. Formal meals in the Victorian era were grand social fears with as many as 15 courses served during a single evening. Etiquette demanded that each course be accompanied by a specific piece of highly specialized flatware, making knowledge of what food to eat with which utensil imperative. The ease with which guests consumed such a meal was a reflection of the social standing. Figure 2.1 shows a small sampling of the various knives that were common during the era. Place. The largest of the knives shown, the place knife, was actually less expensive than a regular dinner knife. Its longer blade drew attention away from its smaller and hence cheaper silver handle. Okay. Dinner. A staple at the table... The dinner knife is one of the largest knives. Its heavy silver handle and its blade, slightly smaller than that of the place knife, made this an expensive addition to any flatware collection. Dessert and lunch. Originally known as a dessert knife, this utensil was renamed a lunch knife when interest waned in purchasing a special knife for dessert. By renaming the knife, cutlery shops were able to continue selling this piece of silverware. Steak. Although not commonly available until after World War II, its special blade made cutting meats easier. Fish. Found in a variety of sizes and shapes, the fish knife was commonly used for both fish and salads. Melon. The sharp knife accompanied the fruit course when melon was served, permitting the diner to cut the melon slices into smaller pieces. Game. This knife was included in the setting when game birds were served whole rather than in pre-carved pieces. With its, sharped, with its sharp curved blade, the game knife allowed diners to carve their birds themselves. 
butter. To typically the smallest knife in the play setting, the butter knife came in a variety of styles. It featured a short blade with a rounded tip to assist in scooping and spreading butter. Oh! Oh! What's this? Amber Sullivan, junior class. Ooh! This is how we sneak into... Um, Izzy's room. If you were, if you recall, what was it? Episode two. Uh, I I saw that news clipping or whatever on the site that said somebody was sneaking into uh, places using an ID card. That's gonna come in handy. Spoons. How many pages is this? Spoons and forks. Okay. Okay, so everything is different here. Small sampling of the available varieties of spoons. You know what? Maybe what we do here is we look at the menu. So celebratory dinner. Got oysters. So first thing we do is we check out seafood. Not fish. Uh, fish would be different. Wait, fish here... But there's also a fish here. Seafood. Yeah. Better known by Victorians as an oyster fork, the seafood fork has a long, thin handle and narrow tines to easily navigate shellfish. Long, thin handle and narrow tines to easily na navigate shellfish. All right. I think this is the seafood knife. I'm um or fork. Let me check that again. Oh, uh thin handle, narrow tines. All right, so thin handle and narrow tines. This one is like larger. This is the thinnest handle, and this is also a thin handle, though. Okay. Thick handle. Uh, thinner, but larger tines. So these are like the thinnest handles, and this one's got like some thick ass ones, so it's got to be this one, I think. Okay. And let's check out the menu again. And then we've got consomme. So consomme uh, is a soup. So we'd use a spoon for that. Um, soup. But is there one specifically for consomme? Okay, the round soup spoon was the traditional soup spoon for the Victorians. When the dessert spoon became an alternative soup spoon in the early 1900s, this soup spoon was relabeled as a cream soup spoon, though it has been used for both consommes and creams until then. Okay, so this is the round one. And then this one is also a round, well, kind of a round one, but it's smaller. So this one is the soup cream spoon okay so uh yeah these other ones aren't really round this one is the consomme one okay and then we have terrapin i don't know what terrapin is uh let's see don't think i saw that here in the knives do we see anything uh, in the spoons? I guess. I guess maybe we'll read it. With that iced tea, I don't think it's that. Dessert? Um, well, let me just read it, I guess. Uh, with its distinctively long handle, the iced tea spoon is the ideal length to stir sugar into tall iced tea serving glasses. Dessert? Originally intended to be used for desserts, this spoon now commonly accompanies a clear soup course. The switch occurred as interest in a specialized dessert spoon waned after World War I. The play spoon was introduced as a cheaper alternative to the larger soup spoon. 
its slightly smaller length and narrow oval shape needed less silver to manufacture. Ice cream with its unique bowl shape, the ice cream spoon became commonplace in the Victorian era due to the immensely popular popularity of the frozen treat orange and fruit before sweeter oranges became available victorians ate their oranges like grapefruit with sugar sprinkled over the top the oranges orange spoons pointed tip was ideal for separating the fruit from the membranes a, as sorbet became more prevalent as an intermezzo to clean the palate between courses a separate spoon was necessary with which to eat it the compact size of the egg spoon, typically used to eat hard-boiled eggs served at breakfast, found a second use at the dinner table. Demitas. Formal diners frequently ended up ended with coffee served in a separate room. The demitas spoon was a vital uh, accompaniment to the individual coffee cup. And the forks. Large with a largest of variety range of variety, forks offered highly specialized options for any course. Yeah, look at all these forks. Place this mid-sized fork was a fixture in nearly every flatware co collection. Its size made it both affordable and easy to use. Fish with thickened side tines and two narrow inner tines, this fork was well adapted to both removing bones from fish and easily spearing the meat for eating. Oh, here we go, terrapin. An early version of a spork the terrapin combined four short tines with a rounded bowl. Since terrapin, turtle meat, that's what it is, was served in a broth, this specialty fork was designed to allow the diner to eat both meat and broth with one utensil. So it's got four tines and a round bowl. Okay. And that was a fork, right? Or was that a spoon? I don't see anything that looks quite like a spork. Do you guys? Terrapin. I mean, the closest I think might be this one. But even then, it doesn't really look like a, a spoon. It's got it's got to have four tines, so it's this one or this one, because they've got four. This one doesn't look like a, a a bowl though. You know what I mean? Terrapin. Yeah, this was under the forks. Short four short tines with a round bowl. I mean, the closest one I feel like. Oh, it says four short tines. Um, like, th these are not short, but. I feel like this is the closest that would be. I guess. I don't know. I mean, I guess it could have been this one. But the, the, these tines look longer than this one. Filet of beef. Uh, let's see. Steak. Uh, spe it doesn't specify. So maybe... Well, not spoon, right? Uh, dessert, seafood... Fish, I guess we're just supposed to know what a steak knife or beef knife looks like. I mean, honestly, I I wouldn't know if I were to guess, which it looks like I have to. I mean, geez, any of these really look like a steak knife to me. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, although not commonly available until after, its special blade made cutting meats easier. I don't know, does it look like this one that looks like a knife? 
I've seen steakhouses have knives that look like this one and this one, though. And even this one. I don't know, man. That was like... There's like... There was not much of anything on that. Are we supposed to, like, eliminate? Process of elimination? There's like... Eight knives here. Are we just supposed to, like, figure out... Let's see. Uh, place? Uh, that place was one. Dinner, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh my god, we are supposed to. We're... <sighs> We're supposed to just figure out what all the knives are. Dude, I don't... I'm going to have to come back to this one, I think. Dude, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to come back to that one. I think uh, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to sneak into Izzy's room. Uh, we, we, you guys see what we're supposed to do here, right? Uh, with that puzzle. So I'm gonna just do this. Try not to get caught. Try not to get caught. Ooh, the black cat. This is the book that's missing from the library. If I return it, I'll get credit points. Yeah, but I think I need to read it. <gasps> What's this? The ape did it. A descent into the maelstrom. The black cat. Uh, oh, these look like. I th the I think these are stories by Poe, but I'm not sure what these numbers mean. It's got to mean something though. workout gear this must be wait if this is workout gear this must be Leela's side right yeah because Izzy's side's on this side so Leela had it vote for Izzy student body prez ooh locked do we have anything no we don't that's, that's, that's intriguing. Okay. Got a closet. Okay. Ooh, key. <gasps> yes. Yes. I'm gonna dig around in her stuff. What's this? Jacob. Look, she's got hearts all around it. She was after the boy. Wait. She had this in the same room as Leela, who was already going out with this dude? Way to be suspicious. Jeez. No shame, Izzy. No shame. Good God, girl. Keep your thirst in check. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's get the key. Ooh. This is the cloak the leader of the Blackwood Society was wearing. She's the leader. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, I can't do anything else with this, right? Yeah, I can't I can't grab anything else. All right, let's uh I guess we'll try to leave before we get caught. How about that? All right. Jeez. Uh, do with the anonymous success. Sneak, in, sneak into her room. Yeah, Check. did that. Uh, let's see. Haven't done anything with the chanting. 
Uh, look for a way to learn more about what people... Yeah. That's done. Haven't found a way. Let me check. Still have to do that. Didn't think so. Um, yeah, we found this book That's done. for the piano. Take pictures of Waverly Academy icons. Be on the lookout for a photo of Rita Hallowell and her cat. Still haven't done that. Dude. Uh, niches in the wall. Investigate the reference to Moore. I, I, I did see something. No, not in this one. Uh, it was this. N c come on. Okay. Yeah, right here. There was this cat uh, thing, icon thing. So... Oh, are these dates? Should we check uh, Rita's thing here for dates? No, there's no dates here. Um... Yeah, I don't know. So we we didn't investigate the Moore reference. Um, you know what? Let me go and check that reference yet again. Come on in. Okay. What does this reference say? Searching for something as white as life is for to find what is hidden. Read much followed by Moore. Poe and other stories. First first edition. The ape did it. The murders in the Rue Morgue, 441. I don't know what these numbers are, but look, there's four stars. 441. Maybe I should search. Uh, let me talk Greetings to her. Greetings once again. I'll let you get back to your music. Door's always open. Um, you know, let me just talk around to people here, see what everyone has to Whoa. say. Not now, okay? Yeah, well, that, that that's that's a thing. Okay. You know, she had a picture of your boyfriend on her desk. I don't know how you didn't know that. Hey, what's going on? I'll check back with you later. Hang in there. Yeah, sure will. And I've I've caught up to your game, Lily. How's it going? Seeing as you're the leader of the Blackwood Society, I need you to tell me something. All right, who blabbed? I look, that's not important. I just need to hear that chant you guys repeat, word for word. The reason why is very complicated, but I promise you, whatever you tell me, I won't repeat it to anyone ever. What's in it for me? Oh, oh okay. If you don't tell me what I want to know, I'll tell everyone about the society. Maybe I don't care. I'll owe you one. How's that? I'll say it once, and that's all. Three is fine, but five is more. Even nineteen defeats four. Should just seven become lore, at least two will find the door. You owe me big. Uh, whatever. I you know what? Becca Sawyer doesn't even exist anyways. What does the chant mean? I have no idea. It's been passed down verbatim since the school and the society was founded. That's absolutely all I know about it. Everything is secret. Like that cloak? I got a text telling me to go to a certain spot. And when I did, there was the blue cloak. Along with a note saying I was to choose seven new members and in the spring, a new leader. Everyone takes a vow of secrecy. Everyone thinks if they break it, they'll be cursed or something. You believe that? No harm in hedging your bets. And since you're in on the secret now, too, you should probably do the same. Well, now that that conversation's over, forever. Forever. What else is going on? I've harassed you enough. See ya. Okay, well, check that out. 
got something else off here. Uh, no, not that. Let's see. No. Um. Yeah, I still haven't gotten into that classroom. Chanting. Did that. Yep. See if the wood piece. Yeah, nope. See what order the foods on that menu were served. Yeah, that would be great. That'd be great. Uh, we've borrowed Check. the book. We've asked That's Mel. Done. Go to the library, look for. Yep, we did, did that. that. Rachel gave it back did to her. That. Yep. See what foods were eaten. I mean, yeah, we. How come there's. A... Did that. Yeah, that was the menu itself. We didn't do this. Uh, see what foods were to be eaten with which utensil. I mean, we technically did. That's done. See if pulling those utensils in that display in the order polite Victorians would have used them. Yeah, we, we were in the middle of doing that. Keep my eyes peeled for a way to oh, put the ID in. Yeah, we did Can't that. Can't check that off yet. What? There's more? Oh, can I break into other people's rooms? Only other person I can think of is Paige. Did that. Check. Izzy stuff. Yeah. Did that. Did that. Tell Izzy. Yep. Check. Where and how to put the Blackwood Society chant to use. Can't check that off yet. No. So there's something else with the ID. Interesting. There's somewhere else we can use this? Oh. Is that how we get into the this classroom here? Yeah, I think so. Oh, dude! Yes, yes, I've been I trying to get that, in. Miss Sawyer, ten demerits now. Get to your room. Oh my God! All right, dude, are you for serious right now? You have just ten, ten demerits. Good God. All right. You know what? With that lousy planning in place, I'm going to end it here. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. We did quite a lot. Uh, I started off uh, with, you know, my confession saying that I figured or read that I had to search things on the computer, but I did only the one thing. Everything else I did legitimately do myself to my astonishment. Anyways, I hope that you guys, again, have enjoyed this video as much as you've enjoyed the first video. I hope that you'll come back for more, and I hope to see you then. Until then, everyone. Bye.